Hey, how you doing? I thought you might be interested in a, another issue I've been studying on. <clears throat> I've been getting books on civilization because on YouTube you can find a lot of uncivilized. Or maybe that's just the way some men talk because when Sigmund Freud first came out, not long after he first came out, he was considered the father of psychology and <clears throat> all the things that that connects to and they didn't like that most men don't like to talk about how they feel and when psychologists and psychiatrists came along that really ticked a lot of them off because they don't even tell their women they just like to get a woman who thinks they know them then they're happy and keep shut up but <clears throat> I started out with this book of Sigmund Freud, Civilization and Its Discontents. Introduction by Louis Menand. And uh, he wrote some really good stuff in here. And thank goodness that, that these kind of things are written more in layman's language. Simpler ways to talk about it. Of course, they're taking some big words in some of it, but still, that can come up in any book, and you need to keep a dictionary close by. So this book is uh, tells about it, civilization and its discontents. Maybe Sigmund Freud's best-known work. It has been praised, dissected, lambasted, interpreted, and reinterpreted. Originally published in 1930, it seeks to answer some ultimate questions. What influences led to the creation of civilization? Good question. How did it come to be? And what determines its course? In this seminal volume of 20th century thought, Freud elucidates the contest between aggression, indeed the death th drive, and its adversary, Eros. He speaks to issues of human creativity and fulfillment, the place of beauty and culture and the effects of repression. Louis Menand, author of the Pulitzer Prize winning The Metaphysical Club, a New York staff writer and professor of English at Harvard University, reflects on the importance of this work in intellectual thought and why it has become such a landmark book in the history of ideas. And I'm telling you, this is a really important part of our history. In fact, it's part of what made this nation great once upon a time. And we might need to grab some lifesaver information out of this to save it from totally crashing down. About Sigmund Freud, 1856 to 1939, has left a lasting impact on psychology, literature, and intellectual history. His case studies are models of high literature. By striving to turn psychology into a science, he created the new field of psychoanalysts, which changed people's understanding of personality. Freud, a medically trained doctor who broke loose from the 19th century thinking to create a modern vision of human nature, will always remain one of the world's greatest thinkers. And if you're trying to learn about what's going on in our society today, I, I suggest this book. And there was another one that I got, that I read and found very interesting too. And so far all the books I've been reading on civilization has more and different details in it that really fit together like a big puzzle. This book, other book is called Civilization and Its Enemies, The Next Stage of History by Lee Harris. Forgetfulness occurs when those who have been long accustomed to civilized order can no longer remember a time in which they had to wonder whether their crops would grow to maturity without being stolen or their children sold into slavery via victorious foe. They forget that in time of danger, in the face of the enemy, they must trust and confide each in each other or perish. They forget, in short, that there has 
ever been a category of human experience called the enemy. That before 9-11 was what had happened to us. The very concept of the enemy had been banished from our moral and political vocabulary. As enemy was just a friend we hadn't done enough for yet. Or perhaps there had been a misunderstanding or an oversight on our part, something that we could correct. Our first task is therefore to try to grasp what the concept of the enemy really means. The enemy is someone who is willing to die in order to kill you, and while it is true that the enemy always hates us for a reason, it is his reason and not ours. So begins civilization and its enemies, an extraordinary tour de force by America's reigning philosopher of 9-11, Lee Harris. What Francis Fukuyama did for the end of the Cold War, Lee Harris has now done for the next great conflict, the war between the civilized world and the international terrorists who wish to destroy it. Each major turning point in our history has produced one great thinker who has been able to step back from petty disagreements and see the bigger picture. And Lee Harris has emerged as that man for our time. He is the one who has helped make sense of the terrorist fantasies and who forces us most strongly to confront the fact that our enemy, for the first time in centuries, refuses to play by any of our rules or to think in any of our categories. We, all, we are all naturally reluctant to face a true enemy. Most of us cannot give up the myth that tolerance is the greatest of virtues and that we can somehow convert the enemy to our beliefs. Yet, as Harris's brilliant tour through the stages of civilization demonstrates, from Sparta to the French Revolution to the present, civilization depends upon brute force, properly wielded by a so sovereign. Today, only America can play the role of the sovereign on the world stage by the use of force when necessary. Lee Harris's articles have been hailed by thinkers from across the spectrum. His message is an enduring one that will change the way readers think and about the war with Iraq, <clears throat> about terrorism, and about our future. But I think this book came out before uh, it was discovered the torment, torture, <clears throat> and filthy things that they did to people that that was the rules of war that nobody did to anybody else's boys who were fighting. But our nation is making a bad example to what's going on in these wars and things now. We don't even have a reason to be where we are at today unless there's a secret that we really should have been told. And I suggest you read this book <clears throat> if you're concerned about that, as I am as well. Because we need to know all the history that goes with all these things in order to figure out something to do about it. Indeed, any activity on the part of the United States would be counterproductive to its genuine purpose, which is to deter the renewals of the strategy of deliberate ruthlessness through the world, for the good of both itself and the world. America, in short, must use its power, unilaterally if need be, to destroy and remove any group of people who are deliberately and consciously following a policy of ruthlessness, whether this group is a state against another state, a state against its own people, or an Al-Qaeda-like organization. Now, this is a part <clears throat> that I disagree with. We have no right to go dictate governments for any other foreign land. How can they possibly get this idea unless some of our enemies have infiltrated our government? Now this is the only thing I can think of. But for sure, I'm still studying. And it goes on to speak about uh, America's is the sole source of global legitimacy. So there's a lot in here about this. And I would love to discuss this with, any, with anyone who ever gets to read this. Maybe I should start up a book club 
so we can take books and discuss them on the internet. Hey, would that work? I'd love it. Well, wherever you're at, day or night, have a nice one. Later.